importance of TCS system in a process industry cannot be denied. And when we talk about Delta V DCS, you will find Delta V DCS system in many oil and gas industry across the globe. That's why understanding Delta V DCS is very important for you if you are interested to get a job in oil and gas industry. And when you want to learn Delta V DCS system, the first step that you should take is to understand Delta V DCS architecture. In this video, I will explain you the Delta V DCS architecture. This explanation would be very easy for you to understand. We would start our discussion from the field level. You can see this architecture, but your focus should not be in a bigger picture. You should be only focus on this site. You can see my cursor down there, which is what we call it field level, where you have a different instruments like transmitter, temperature, pressure level, flow transmitters. You have a control walls, you have fans, you have electrical motors, you have transformers, you have VFDs. And these all devices are going to be connected to Delta V DCS cabinet. So you can see these wires are actually getting into DCS network here. These are all DCSs. In the control cabinet of Delta V DCS, you will find IO cards. We have digital and analog IO cards. For digital signals, for digital inputs, you would be using digital input card in Delta V architecture. And for digital output signals, you would be using digital output card. And for analog inputs like temperature values, pressure values, flow values coming from the field transmitters would be getting into analog input card. For analog output, if you want to connect the output of this Delta V DCS network to some field devices, these field devices are final control elements, include fans, includes lights, control walls how it all begins first of all field signal will get into input card and then this would be connected to controller the signal would be shared from the card to the controller delta v dcs controller is a computer inside the, con the computer you would be writing a code to control all the process how your process should be running what is the right sequence to run in that particular process plant that would be coded inside the DCS controller. And this DCS controller will generate some outputs and these outputs would be, be sent back to the field via output card. And when we talk about final control elements that would be connected to your output card that include control walls, fans, lights, these are all example of final control element. So I would repeat again, it all started from field level where you have field instruments and you have limit switches which are going to be connected to input cards. Analog are digital based on the signal type. Then this data would be shared from input card to the controller and controller based on what logic you have written inside the controller, based on that, it would generate some outputs of final actions. These final actions would be communicated back to the field. Now you can see that these are all gonna be connected back to this particular network. What we call it, this is very important for you to understand, this is called control network. I would explain you the what is Delta V workstation later on. For now, you have to understand what is operator station, what is engineering workstation, what is OPC machine, and what are other servers that are actually that you can see right over here. This is operator screen, this is operator screen, this might be OPC server, this might be application server, or any other server that exists over there. This can be engineering workstation. Let me explain what are these things. So operator screens, it's a visualization screen through which you can see what's going on into the process. What's the level value? What's the temperature? How much is the wall opening? How much is the RPM of, how much is the RPM of the motor that can be visualized by these screens. On a production plant, you might have a different areas. Like when we talk about oil and gas industry, it have different areas like a mine unit, it have a silver, silver recovery unit, and each area have a lot of processes running inside that. So the DCS or Delta V DCS makes the job very easy for you. Each area would have its own control cabinet. 
in that inside that control cabinet you would not have only single controller instead of that you would have two controllers what's the need of second controller this is very important to understand if your main controller fails your second controller would act as a redundant option for you in the case of main controller failure redundant controller will take care about the job will take care about the controlling activity so inside that control cabinet you would have two controllers main redundant and each area have its own unique controllers each area would have its own control cabinet that includes IO cards that include power supply that include different other cards that include controllers as well so you can see right now this area have one controller this have another this have another this have another What's the beauty of that? I explained earlier in a DCS basic understanding video. The benefit of having different controllers or different control cabinets in different areas of a production plant is that if in the case of one controller or one control cabinet fails, one area would be affected. Rest of the areas or rest of the operation inside the plant would be still up and running. So now, after that, this is going to be connected to control network. This is what we call it control network, which connects your controllers and these computers or workstations. I will explain you what is workstation, what is node in coming slides. For now, you just have to stick into this explanation. You have operator screens, you can see right now here. You have engineering workstations, you have servers that include application server and OPC server. So let's start with what is your operator screens or operator stations. Operator stations are a screen through that you can visualize what's going on into the process. What's the level value? What was the temperature value? What's the level value? What's the flow? How much is the RPM, the motor? How the process is running? You can have a complete view of your process through these operator screens. Now, in order to program these controllers or to create these graphics, which you can see here through the operator screens here, and need to have a, some sort of software. And that software would be actually installed into engineering workstation. I engineering workstation job is to program these controllers or to create the graphics. This particular engineering workstation would help you to connect to this one, this one, and this one. Not only you can connect, but you can also program these guys. You can change the logic of these controllers. And we have OPC machines. If Delta V DCS want to talk to any third party DCS vendor or any third party vendor, PLC or DCS, or even SCADA or HMI, OPC server will help you to connect to third party devices on a Delta V DCS. That's the beauty of OPC. We have a detailed video about OPC. You can have a link of that. You can just see somewhere on the screen. Click it. You can find a detailed video about OPC. Let me explain some of the concepts. What is Delta VDCS workstation? Any computer which is connected to Delta VDCS network will be called as Delta VDCS workstation. When you talk about controller, it's an industrial computer that is used to program and run the logic to automate the process. You can see these controllers over here. Like that, you have a control network that connects different nodes on Delta V system. Before we understand control network, it's important to understand what is node. Any device on Delta V network workstation or controller is called node. So if you get back here, you can see this is node, this is node, this is node, this is node, because it's a controller. As we explained, node is any device which can be controller or it can be workstation. So these are nodes. These are all workstations, okay? This is workstation, this is workstation, because any PC which is connected here on this network, a control network would be called as workstation. Computer connected to Delta V DCS network is DCS workstation. So this is workstation, this is workstation, this is workstation, this one, this one, this one. And these are all controllers, okay? So you can say that all the controllers here and all the workstations here would be called as nodes. Simple as that. This was the first video about the architecture. We would share some of the complex architectures in coming days. If you like this video, consider hitting the like button. If in the case you haven't subscribed this YouTube channel, consider subscribing. Until next video, take care and Allah Hafiz.